These are 10 mass-produced sailboats with the lowest capsize rates and strongest survival records in cruising. One has earned official certification as unsinkable, and the others have proven themselves through decades of ocean passages, documented disasters, and engineering that puts safety above everything else. That distinction actually matters. 15 sailors died in the 1979 Fastnet race, and 75 boats capsized. That tragedy led naval architects to develop the capsize screening formula. Any boat scoring below 2.0 qualifies as suitable for ocean passages, and every boat on this list meets that standard, with most exceeding it by a wide margin. Number 10. Outbound 44 25 years of refinement went into the Outbound 44, and designer Carl Schumacher specified solid fiberglass hulls with no coring at all. That choice eliminates the delamination risks that plague cheaper boats, and it saves owners from headaches when a purchase was made based on price. A capsized screening formula of 1.8 puts the outbound well under the 2.0 threshold, but what really sets it apart is a 9-inch bridge deck that protects the companionway from flooding, along with a watertight forward bulkhead. If the bow is breached, that forward compartment can flood without taking the whole boat down. Hanjin builds these in China, in the same yard that produces passport yachts. The outbound proves modern construction can match traditional safety standards when builders care about structural integrity. Number 9. Bristol Channel Cutter English pilot cutters that met incoming ships in notoriously rough Bristol Channel waters inspired designer Lyle Hess to create this boat. Those originals were working vessels built to operate when conditions kept everyone else tied to the dock, and Hess carried that philosophy forward. Lynn and Larry Party named their Bristol Channel Cutter Taliesin and logged 100,000 miles aboard her, circling the globe past all the great southern capes, including Cape Horn. They documented everything in four sailing books. Sam L. Morse Company built approximately 128 hulls between 1976 and 2007. At 14,000 pounds displacement, with 4,600 pounds of lead ballast, these 28-foot waterline boats handle like much larger vessels. Bronze fittings appear throughout, reflecting an overbuilt philosophy that chooses strength over weight savings every time. Number 8. West Sail 32. One of the most seaworthy sailboats ever built, the West Sail 32 came from California yards that turned out approximately 800 of them between 1971 and 1981, drawing on Colin Archer's double-ended Norwegian pilot boat designs which had proven themselves in North Sea conditions for decades. The safety story lives in the numbers. A capsized screening formula of 1.6 sits well below the 2.0 offshore threshold, and a displacement-to-length ratio of 419 puts these boats firmly in the ultra-heavy category. Capsizing a west sail takes enormous energy, and even in large seas, the motion stays forgiving. Critics point out they are slow, wet, and cramped by modern standards, but advocates say none of that matters when survival counts more than speed. Number 7. Amal Super Maramu More watertight compartments appear in Amal yachts than in any other production cruiser, with four full-height watertight bulkheads and valved limber pipes that create eight separate compartments which can be isolated from each other. Henri Amel founded the company in 1964. He was a partially blind World War II veteran who wanted to build yachts that put safety and comfort first in any sea condition, while remaining easy enough for a couple to manage. Between 1989 and 2005, Yards completed 497 Super Maramu hulls, featuring solid, hand-laid biaxial laminate below the waterline. Most boats have dozens of through hulls that can fail and flood the interior but Amel reduced those potential flooding points to just two raw water intakes. One owner rounded Cape Horn with only his wife on board in a factory stock Amel. The protected center cockpit, combined with electric furling, keeps these boats manageable for couples well into their 70s. Valiant 40 was inducted into the American Sailboat Hall of Fame in 1997. That honor reflected an extraordinary voyaging record that few production boats can match, Mark Schrader completed the first American solo circumnavigation of all five southern capes in 1983. Francis Stokes became the first American monohull to finish O-Star in 1976. 
Dan Byrne completed the 27,000-mile BOC challenge between 1982 and 1983. Designer Bob Perry said they were more interested in sea kindliness and probable survival in a knockdown or rollover than performance. The hull is one inch thick at the keel and tapers to three-eighths of an inch at the capper. Approximately 200 left the yard between 1975 and 1993. More of these hulls have completed circumnavigations than any other production boat, according to company records. Number 5. Hallberg Rassi Nearly 9,400 yachts have carried the Hallberg Rassi name since 1943, and every model achieves CE Category A certification, which is Europe's highest ocean rating. Kurt Bjorklund sailed his Hallberg Rassi 31 named Golden Lady through three and a half circumnavigations without any special strengthening, making it the first fiberglass boat deemed significant enough for display in a Swedish maritime museum. Construction reflects Scandinavian thoroughness at every turn, with hull-to-deck joints bonded with epoxy and then glassed over rather than simply screwed together. Stanchions mount on solid stainless rods recessed into the bulwark to minimize leak points, and the HR40 achieves a capsized screening formula around 1.6 to 1.7 with approximately 45% ballast ratio. The company philosophy captures their approach. There is no need to be soaking wet to enjoy sailing. Number 4. Pacific Seacraft 34 Crew fatigue worried designer Bill Creolock more than any other threat to seaworthiness, so his Pacific Seacraft designs emphasize easy motion, dryness, and manageable handling, alongside raw strength. Construction creates almost a hull within a hull, with the full-length interior pan bonding to the outer hull, using biaxial fiberglass roving for structural redundancy. Seven-eighths of an inch is how thick the hull gets at the bottom. Induction into the American Sailboat Hall of Fame came in 1992 for the Pacific Seacraft 37, and Fortune magazine named Pacific Seacraft Builder of one of America's best products. An estimated 8,000 boats carry Creolock designs, and they command premium prices on the used market because the safety reputation generates consistent demand. Island Packet was the first American sailboat builder to achieve CE Category A certification, validating their construction approach against Europe's rigorous standards for stability and scantlings. Their most important safety feature involves fully encapsulated lead ballast forming a double bottom over the entire keel length. No keel bolts exist to fail, corrode, or loosen because the ballast is literally glassed into the hull structure. That matters more than you might think. Four sailors died in 2014 aboard the Beneteau Chiki Rafiki when her bolted-on keel separated in the Atlantic, and Island Packet's design eliminates that catastrophic failure mode entirely. Over 1,800 boats, spanning models from 27 to 49 feet, have left their Largo, Florida facility with numerous circumnavigations documented by owners. Number 2. Contessa 32 Sailing's most famous safety story belongs to the Contessa 32, written during the catastrophic 1979 Fastnet race. 58 boats started in Class 5, and all of them either retired or were abandoned, with one exception. Ascent crossed the finish line as the only boat in her class to complete the race, skippered by 23-year-old Alan Kerr through forced 10 to 11 winds and 50-foot breaking waves. She posted a respectable corrected time, while boats around her rolled over and lost crew members. An angle of vanishing stability of 156 degrees helps explain why, compared to just 117 degrees for the half-tonners that suffered multiple fatalities, that 39-degree difference meant Ascent could right herself from near-total inversion while lighter, beamier boats stayed capsized. She went on to log over 100,000 miles to the Arctic, Antarctica, Hawaii, and Easter Island. Jeremy Rogers built over 700 Contessa 32s in the UK between 1971 and 1983, and the design proved so capable that the Joint Services Sail Training Center purchased a fleet of nine for military training. Number 1. ETAP. No other sailboat manufacturer can claim what ETAP yachts holds. They have certification as unsinkable by the French Merchant Marine, the sole authority worldwide authorized to issue such certificates. Belgian Yards produced over 6,000 of these boats between 1970 and 2008 using patented double hull construction with closed-cell polyurethane foam injected between inner and outer skins. 
Yachting Monthly tested an ETAP 21 Sai by deliberately opening all seacocks, and the boat remained habitable, with water rising only to settee level. An ETAP 38I struck a reef in the Red Sea and was towed to safety while completely flooded. That was possible because that model contains 240 cubic feet of foam, absorbing a maximum 5% moisture over decades. Three knots is how fast these boats can sail while hold and filled to waist level. For buyers who want a boat that mathematically cannot sink, original ETAP yachts remain the only verified option on the market. Here is what the statistics actually show and what they do not. No publicly available database ranks sailboat models by sinking rates and marine insurers keep loss statistics by model to themselves. What exists are design metrics with known correlations to survival, and every boat on this list exceeds those standards. Naval architect Bob Perry offers the most important caveat. The biggest contributor to seaworthiness is the skipper. 24 yachts were abandoned during the 1979 Fastnet inquiry, and all 24 turned up later still floating. Crews who stayed with their boats survived, while crews who left for life rafts often did not. These 10 boats earned their reputations through thousands of documented ocean passages rather than theoretical calculations alone. Manufacturers who prioritize quality construction over cost savings built them, and owners who invest in maintenance and education sail them. That combination of quality construction and seamanship produces the safety records that actually matter when conditions turn ugly.